And in the impact segment tonight, as you may know, Homeland Security issued a memorandum saying that the feds are worried about the resurrection of right-wing terrorism, which could include some military people returning from war fronts in Afghanistan and Iraq. Well, that has angered some people, so Homeland Chief Janet Napolitano is clarifying. I really do want to stress to the veterans out there watching uh, this today, uh, that report did not, and, and we do not mean to suggest that veterans as a whole uh, are at risk of becoming the violent. Anger because if you, if you read the memo, um, it is uh, unnecessary. That's the word. This memo is unnecessary. Yeah. The memo itself says in the first sentence, we don't have any facts to back this up. This is just some yeah. theory we were kicking around in a bar someplace. I didn't, they don't have it in a bar, but it, that's where it could have been because it's, it's that far-fetched. Maybe because some right-wingers uh, don't like the Obama administration, feel their guns may be threatened or, you know, the dollar will collapse. Oh, and, and it appears to be just another example of an angry citizen lashing out at a government institution. Just last month, Joe Stack railed against the IRS before crashing a small plane into their office in Austin, Texas, and last summer a man with neo-Nazi tendencies opened fire at the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington. Different motives to be sure, but are there common threads here, and how can law enforcement stop these attacks without monitoring ideology? We're joined now by ABC News consultant and former FBI Special Agent Brad Garrett. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. So what do you think, Brad? Do, do these three cases fit the same profile? Well, they generally fit the same profile. We have to be careful about boxing this in that we're cookie cutter about what is and is not. But the common theme is you, you, you have people that have sort of reached their end. In their mind, they're not getting what they want. We're not listening to them. And so taking some extreme action empowers them. As illogical as that sounds, it empowers them, and they go and commit these acts. In, in, back in April, almost a year ago, the uh, Department of Homeland Security put out this uh, assessment called Right-Wing Extremism, Current Economic and Political Climate Fueling a Resurgence in Radicalization and Recruitment. And the title alone stirred up a, a political firestorm for the Secretary uh, Napolitano. She apologized, had to reaffirm that the government doesn't monitor Monitor people who are opposed to this administration, but but as a law enforcement officer, how do you make the distinction between somebody who has a legitimate different point of view from this government and those who might come unhinged? Well, it's, it is very difficult, but what you have to do is separate rhetoric from action and people who are actually making steps to, to harm someone. And unfortunately, you only get that information if people report it and Law enforcement has sources or individuals that provide them information so you can get in front of the person. Right. But uh, what are some of the, you know, if this is a trend, and uh, have we seen this before in past recessions and, and past Democratic administrations? Well, if you, if you believe the numbers about people involved in extremist movements in this country, they increased in the 90s when President Clinton was in power. And there's some belief, in the, in, at least in the right-wing folks, that Democrats will reduce their ability to, to have firearms, and they see their rights disappearing, I guess, under, under the Democrats. And all it really is is sort of a rationalization to do what they really want to do. Right. Uh, one thing they all had in common is a mental illness. Yeah, I think we can all agree on that in that case. Brad Garrett, we appreciate your insight this morning. Thanks so much.